This is the Space Needle here in Seattle, Washington. It was built for the 1962 World's Fair at the Seattle Center, and in there it's stood ever since. It's got an observation deck, it's got a lower level, it's tall. This is a smaller version of it. This is a small model. I think we might go bigger. Yeah, we're gonna print it bigger. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. Before we talk about any bigger things, let's talk about this model. This is a model of the Space Needle, modeled by Intentional 3D. They're out of Bellevue, Washington, right across the lake from Seattle. It prints in parts, and they're easy to assemble. They're not the easiest to print. There we go, here's all the models. I, I do need to tell you though, I did glue the base to this part, and I did glue this top part to this part when I printed it. I printed all of these using Polyalchemy's Emerald City Elixir which makes sense because Seattle is known as the Emerald City. These models were printed with two perimeters, three lower layers, four top layers. Uh, it was printed around 60 millimeters per second at 210 degrees Celsius. I was using Z-Hop on the printer because when it's printing these tall, thin structures right here, uh, I did have it knock over <laughs> a couple times. This wasn't a first print success. I did have to print this a couple times, but it came out fantastic. There we go, it's all together. And according to this handy dandy tape measure, it is roughly 15 and a half inches tall. I'm known for printing big things though, and I have some large format 3D printers. I say we go bigger. So here's the plan, we're gonna scale this by 400%. 400%. We're gonna reach out to Polyalchemy and they're gonna give us this giant roll of filament because we've already printed it. It's ready to go. I've got all these pieces <laughs> standing by. There we go. This giant spool of filament printed all of these pieces. These pieces are all scaled at 400% which means at 15 and a half inches tall, it should put this new space needle right around 62 inches tall. That's taller than my kids. That's, that's five feet, two inches. I'm excited. Wait, I almost forgot the base. But what's really cool about the base is I printed it on my G-Max 1.5 XT Plus, which happens to have a BuildTac flexible steel sheet. And at one of the run-throughs I did for this video, I did tape removing this off of this, and it was glorious. It should come off pretty easily. Just like that, because it just came right off. I need to tell you, if you're a 3D printer manufacturer and you put a flexible, removable build plate on it, you are ahead of the curve. It's a wonderful thing. I highly suggest you get yourself a flexible, a flexible build plate. I do want to mention one thing. I'm not some sort of 3D printing superhuman that gets prints right all the time. And this print did happen to produce some failures which kind of sucked. It's really, it's really, really important to know that this is a large print, it's gonna take a lot of filament, but if you're going to do something like this yourself, make sure you budget in enough extra filament in case you need to reprint a piece because the nozzle jams when you're using retraction on all these tiny little pieces. Because of the support structure and no retraction, I had some problems right in here, which you can see in the picture, but a little bit of chisel and a little bit of uh, needle nose pliers and you end up with a piece that looks fantastic. Or if you need to make sure and build with a lot of support material to make sure the underside comes out okay. Or if for some strange reason it happens to put some horizontal layers where it shouldn't because there was a slicer error. Just make sure you budget for the right amount of filament when you're printing large, because I would hate for you to get to the last piece and not have the filament to do it. I made a mess. <laughs> so we have a problem. Uh, this is my new taller workbench, and the ceiling is 
just right there, which means that there is roughly 46 inches between the top of this and my ceiling. And with the new larger space needle projected to be 62 inches, we can't build it on top of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the base. We're gonna put this on to verify it fits. Oh, please fit, please, 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 please. Yes, this fits. We verified that. And now I think what we can do is back the camera up and we will build it right in front of this desk. Let's do it. Here we go. We're now, <laughs> we've backed the camera up a little bit. We're now seeing the front of my brand new bench here. Here is the base and the one piece. Let's bring it down here and let's see if we can't get this thing built. Okay, this is the next piece. So as I'm putting it together, well, why don't we talk about this? Each of these taller pieces was printed on the Raise 3D N2 Plus. I printed it with two perimeters. I printed with three bottom layers and I printed with four top layers. I believe I did 10% infill. Uh, sometimes I used support, sometimes I used a raft. I used Idea Maker to slice it for the Raise 3D N2 Plus. One more of those. And we gotta put this little threaded part in here. I don't wanna drop this. This would be terrible. Okay, a little bit back, there we go. Okay, the round pieces here and the base were printed on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus. So I do, I do gotta mention, the, the filament itself, Polyalchemy Elixir, is a wonderful looking filament, but it's not as rigid at other, as other PLA filaments, and so I did happen to break off this antenna right here and right here. I used some super glue, I put it back together. You would notice it if you looked up close, but from where you're at, it probably looks just fine. When I do the close-up shots though, you're really gonna notice it. And so I wanna make sure I told you and it wasn't a surprise. Here we go. <laughs> Look at that. That is, oh, this is so cool. Let's see what the tail of the tape says. From the carpeted floor to the top of the needle, 62 inches, 62 inches. This is fantastic. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. I don't think I'm gonna glue it together. I think that would be bad because then I wouldn't be able to take it apart. And if I wanna bring this somewhere, I'm gonna need to take it apart because if I shove this in my car, it's gonna get broken five ways from Sunday. In total, it was more than 150 hours of 3D printing with even a few dozen hours committed to prints that had failed. What's really great about this filament is it looks fantastic and there's zero cleanup done. There's no sanding or polishing. This is what the prints looked like coming off the 3D printers. The N2 Plus and the G Max both printed with two perimeters, three bottom layers, four top layers, 10% infill, 60 millimeters per second, 210 degrees centigrade, on the nozzle. Joel, you're saying, is this a world record? Is this like the hairy lion? No. No? Back in April of 2016, a company by the name of Fathom, which has an office here in Seattle, decided to 3D print the Space Needle at three different stages of its construction for a building a Marvel exhibit at the Space Needle itself. They use Stratasys Fortis printers, which are crazy expensive and used for industrial purposes. So even though their 3D printed space needles are 77 inches tall, they're kind of in a different category. This is a 62 inch tall space needle printed with home use desktop 3D printers using PLA filament. They used uh, Stratasys Fortis machines with ASA filament. I'm gonna go ahead and say, uh, I'm gonna say world record. I'm gonna say world record, that's it. I'm done, I'm done. This is cool. I'm really excited about this. Oh man, what should I do with this? Uh, leave a suggestion down in the comments because I really don't know. I, I can't put it up here, I can't put it on this desk. If it, I mean, we just got a new puppy. Puppy's gonna destroy this thing if I leave it anywhere. So I need to know what to do with it. Maybe a school would want it. Maybe the Space Needle would want it. There's probably some local organization that this could be shown to as a demonstration of what's possible with 3D printers in some sort of STEM program. That would be pretty cool. All right, there you have it. A 3D printed Space Needle using Polyalchemy Elixir's Emerald City PLA. 
It was printed on the Raze 3D N2 Plus with the larger, wider sections printed on the G-Max 1.5 XT Plus. It's glorious. I love it. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me. Subscribe if you're not, and ring that bell to be notified of when really tall green stuff is uploaded to the channel. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red, and a big thanks if you let the ads play. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys, as always. High five.